In this video, I'll break down 9 music video effects for Final Cut Pro 10. Now, the two main places where I got these really cool digital assets is Brian Delmata's shop as well as my own digital store. So in this video, I'll just give you a basic idea of how to use these really cool like you know, effects, presets, transitions, overlays. I'm just going to give you a very basic idea of how to use these as well as you know, give you guys some really cool like creative ideas. But again, use your own creativity. Don't you know, copy exactly what I'm doing. Use your own creativity and just try to create your own really cool you know, different versions of these effects but this video was just kind of like just a very you know, beginner guide to how to use these really cool digital assets the first preset I'm gonna go over is this really cool camera flash preset so what you want to do is you just want to take your adjustment layer now this is a free plugin this is from Ryan Nagel so I, I'm, I'm guessing if you watch my videos you probably already had this really cool plugin but I'm gonna take an adjustment layer I'm gonna set it to control D six frames so I basically set the length of the adjustment layer to six frames now this is really important what you want to do is you want to go forward one one, two, three frames and place a marker. So there's three frames on this side, there's three frames before the marker, and there's three frames after the marker. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take that marker and you're gonna place it right in between the two clips. So you have this clip right here and then you have this photo. This, All this timing and stuff is really important. Now what you wanna do is you're gonna head over here to the effects panel and you're gonna basically type in flash, um, what's called the camera flash. So here's camera flash transition. Now this is not a plugin, this is a preset. And I will put up on screen the tutorial to show you how to install presets this does not go in your motions template folder this goes in your effects presets folder it's enough it's a, like a preset not a plugin so as you can see because we set the the, the the timing and the duration the marker if I go make sure you all that all that stuff is correct so now if you watch it one two three it's the brightest where that right where that marker is and then one two three and there you go so you want to make sure all that timing and those markers and everything is correct and if all that stuff is correct applying the camera flash preset as you can see boom there you go you have a really cool camera flash preset now I've showed you in multiple videos how to actually create this preset from scratch but I thought you know I might as well just create a preset so instead of having to constantly recreate this from scratch you can just apply this really cool preset onto an adjustment layer and there you go really easy really cool camera flash transition transition. The next effect I want to go over is this really cool paper overlay. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete these top two photos because the same as steps apply to those. But I just want to show you just the basic idea of how to create this really cool paper overlay. Now this is actually from Brian Delmato so this is not on my website. This is from Brian Delmato. I'll make sure to put the links down in the description below. So here's basically how you create this really cool effect. I'm sure you probably see me do this effect in multiple videos but I want to show you another really cool way of using this effect. So what you're going to do you're going to take the rotation and just kind of mess with it in this case we'll do like 90 degrees we're gonna go ahead and scale up the paper overlay now this is a little more complicated than you think what you want to do is you want to take this layer go to the blend mode and you want to change it to stencil alpha now what you want to do is you want to take the paper overlay it's the one that you just changed to stencil alpha you're going to create a copy now you want to make sure the rotation the scale position of both of these are exactly the same the only thing you're changing is the blend mode now what you want to do is select this one and change this one to screen and there you go. So this top one, you want to make sure the position, scale, rotation are the same. This top one, all you're doing is blend mode, changing it to screen. And then this bottom one or this middle one right here, you're changing that blend mode to stencil alpha. And there you go. And what you can also do is you can select on the photo itself and increase the scale. And because of the blend mode, as you can see, I can increase it as far as I want and it's never going to go past the paper border. So you see, I can increase it no matter how much I increase it or move the position around, it's always going to stay within this paper border. So if, you, if you've seen your know, tutorials on this effect, you know, people using like Photoshop or Premiere Pro and you're wondering how to do it in Final Cut, there you go. That's how you do it in Final Cut. Now one, a couple of the tips you might want to keep in mind is you can select on this one and you can head over here to like the um, uh, color curves and you can head over here to Luma and you can mess with the Luma so if you feel like it doesn't look that great. So if the photo is like darker or a brighter photo, sometimes messing with the Luma curves can sometimes, by changing, you also, you, you obviously also change the color if you want to be a certain color but I found sometimes messing with the luma curves can help it look a lot better now what you're going to do is you're going to select this one the paper overlay and the photo you can select all three and you can just right click and create a new compound clip and then after we create a compound clip so we'll just call this um, paper overlay now by creating a compound clip as you can see now you can actually see the background so if you do this before and you realize well the background is black I can't see anything behind the photo you have to just create a compound clip and there you go with this camera flash preset you have this really cool paper overlay now if you're playing the clip and you realize it looks a little too like stagnant you want a little bit of movement you can actually animate the actual like paper overlay 
or in this case, I'm actually going to use a preset pack from Brian Nagel. Now, this is not from Brian Dimata or my personal website. This is a, a another like really cool animation plugin, but you can obviously just keyframe it. I'm just showing you one example. So I go to RN animations and I'm going to apply the hover effect. You don't have to do this. You could just manually keyframe it if you don't want to buy this plugin, but I just want to show you a really cool, like, you know, way of doing it by using a plugin. Again, you can manually keyframe it. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. I just want to show you how I created the intro. So now if I play the video, as you can see, see the paper effect is now hovering. So it's just adding a little bit of animation to it. So that's just an idea. Maybe you want to just you know, animate the rotation or animate the scale or animate the position. That is just one idea. I just want to show you how I did it. Now you may also want to add like a nice sound effect. So you can see here's a camera shutter sound effect. I get all of my sound effects from Epidemic Sound. I would say Epidemic Sound and Artlist are the best two places to find sound effects. So you basically just, I'm, I, in this case, I line the sound effect up with the, the brightest part of the camera flash transition. And as you can see, boom, there you go. So that's just a really cool idea. Obviously, you know, you don't, you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. I'm just giving you the basic idea of how to use these like overlays and presets and use your own creativity to create some really cool, you know, different versions or different varieties of this really cool effect. The next one I'll go over is this really cool like thermal inverted freeze frame transition. So what you want to do is you want to select on the second clip and click on option F. All that's going to do is it's going to freeze the first the, uh, frame of the second clip. So control D, we're going to set it to 10 frames. So all you're doing is it's just freezing the first frame of the second clip. So as you can see, if I play the video, it's just going to freeze and then go into the second clip, just like, you know, a very basic freeze frame transition. Now what you want to do is you want to select on the freeze frame and you're going to add a draw mask. And what the draw mask is going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to cut out the subject. So like, you know, in Photoshop, I think it's called like the pen tool or the lasso tool. That's basically how you do it in Final Cut. So I'm going to do a very rough mask just for the sake of the tutorial, because I don't think you want to have me you'll just sit here for like 20 minutes watching me cut this subject. But obviously take your time with this, make sure it's really precise. But just for the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to do a very quick mask. So all you're just basically doing is you're cutting out the freeze frame. So there we go. You're just basically going to cut out the freeze frame. So you're going to see the, the cutout of him appears on clip one, and it's going to transition into clip two. So if I play it, this is what it looks like. It just freezes and then transitions into clip two. Now in this case, I'm going to set the duration to control D two frames. And then I'm going to do some select here, let me I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. This is lasts for two frames. I'm going to copy it one, two, three times. So you have four copies of the freeze frame and each one lasts two frames. And now basically now you're going to apply the thermal effect and the inverted effect to create that really, really cool transition. So if I play the video, this is what it looks like. You know, it's, it looks cool, but it looks a little bit boring. So let me show you a couple cool ways to spice this transition up. So what you want to do is you want to head over here to your effects panel and I'm using the Brian Delmata thermal preset pack. Now I have a video showing how to install um, presets as well as actually this specific preset. This is not a plugin, this is a preset. So don't put this in motions template folder. I'll put up on screen the, the tutorial you have to watch in order to install these. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the thermal effect and let's apply it onto the first clip. And then I'm going to apply a different thermal effect onto the third clip. Don't worry, I'll go frame by frame. So you, you're not going to miss anything. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take the second one and you're going to apply an x-ray effect onto it. So you can see x-ray, we're going to apply the x-ray effect onto the second clip. Now don't worry, again, I'll go frame by frame so you're not going to miss anything. So what you're going to do is going to head over here. In this case, we're going to add a color board. We're going to head over to uh, saturation, which kind of desaturate it, take the exposure, and then just take these shadows down. You don't have to do that. That is just an idea. So now if I play the video, don't worry, I will go frame by frame. So make sure you don't, don't miss anything. So let's play the video. And then as you can see, that looks so cool. This really cool inverted flicker um, freeze frame transition. So here we go. Here's the first two. So one, two, thermal effect, and the inverted effect, one, two, thermal effect, and then one, two, and then here's a clip, one, two. So there we go, I'll go, I'll, I'll go slow again so you can see, this is what it looks like. And then here's one, here's the, the second one, here's the third one, thermal effect, and then the normal clip, and there you go. You create this really cool inverted thermal flicker freeze frame transition. So that's just one creative way of using this really cool thermal preset pack from Brian Delmata. Now you can also add like a really cool glitch sound effect to just make the transition overall a lot better. Unfortunately, you're not really gonna be able to hear this because when I do the voiceover, it's hard to actually hear the audio of my computer, but you can just add like a really cool glitch sound effect just to make it look, uh, or you'll look and sound a lot nicer. The next one I'll go over is this really cool transition pack on my digital store. So this is from my digital store and not from Brian Delmata. So it's these really cool drag and drop transitions. So what you're gonna do is head over here to the transitions tab and as you can see, custom transitions. 
transitions. So as you can see, you have a whole bunch of them. You have this really cool blur one, this really cool like glint, uh, like directional blur, light ray, prism, an invert one, and it also comes with a free like slice transition. In this case, we're gonna take the bad TV. So take the transition and apply it in between your two clips. And I'll just show you a couple of little different you know things to keep in mind. So if you if the if you play the video and you realize that transition is way too long, simply select on the transition and then just trim it. So this will just make the transition happen faster. So you can have make it a longer or faster. If you're using a 24p timeline, I would encourage you to speed up the transition. That's just what I found. Speeding up the transition on a lower frame rate timeline looks a lot better. So let's play and as you can see, there we go. Just a simple drag and drop transition. You have this really cool bad TV. So if that's how you you, you can speed it up or slow it down. You can also select um, select on the transition and as you can see I have some like pu a published parameter. So some of them I don't think I don't know if all of them come with published parameters, but some of them might. So all you do is select on the transition, head over here, and then I will give you some settings, just the things that I thought would actually be practical. So in this case, we're just going to increase the static. I don't know if all of them come with published parameters, but I think most of them do. And as you can see, there we go. A simple drag and drop transition. There we go. It takes you like, you know, 10 seconds and you have a really clean transition. The next one I'll go over is this really cool dreamy star filter glow effect. Now when you buy the preset, again this is on my digital store, it's going to come with two effects, the dazzle effect and the glint effect. They both pretty much kind of do the same thing. So let's head over here to my effects. You're going to get the dazzle effect. So you'll get this one when you buy the preset as well as if I can find it, you'll also be able to get the glint effect. So you know, the glint is right here. So you see you have the glint and the dazzle. So this is the first effect you're going to get. You'll get the glint effect. So obviously just um, apply the, the effect onto the clip and then you can just adjust the settings. So we want to take the exposure we want to turn the exposure up, we want to take the streaks up, we want to take the angle, mess with the angle, and there you go. That is the glint effect. So simply drag it on top of your clip, adjust the settings, and you have this really cool like star filter effect. Now that's one of the effects that comes, it also comes with this really cool dazzle effect. So let's apply it onto the clip, and it kind of does the same thing, but as you can see, let's adjust the amount a little bit, and we can take the threshold and adjust the threshold a little bit. So there you go. Simple as that. These are just simple drag and drop effects that you can apply onto your clip. Now these effects definitely aren't going to work for every single clip, but especially with clips with a lot of light in them, see, it just looks so cool. See if I disable it, especially with clips with a lot of like light in them, these effects are going to look really cool. Simple drag and drop effects, apply them onto your clip and adjust the settings and you have this really cool like, you know, dreamy star filter glow effect. I think this is a really cool effect, especially used on like, you know, specific clips. It's not going to work for every clip, but on the right clip, this effect is going to look really, really cool. The next effect I want to go over is this really cool CRTV effect. So you can see CRT TV effect. What you're going to do, this is just an effect. You're just going to drag it on top of your clip. So just drag it onto your clip and there you go. It's just a simple drag and drop effect. Now what you're going to do is just mess with the settings. Here are the couple of settings that I like. I would take the fisheye amount and change it to maybe like five. Take the fisheye radius. So, you know, that looks pretty good. I would also take the saturation, increase the saturation and the number of scan lines. I would mess with that and then maybe I would take the waviness and turn the waviness down. This is just my personal preference. You can also just completely disable the fisheye effect. So it just depends on if you want like kind of that really cool TV effect or you don't want the TV or you don't want the effect to kind of have like a fisheye effect. That's all up to you. Simple as that. A simple drag and drop effect and now you have this really cool CRT TV effect. So obviously it's not going to look as good as using a real CRT TV but it's a really cool way of kind of doing it digitally. So as you can see here's it before and then here's it after. I think this is just a really cool really nice drag and drop effect. The next effect I want to go over are these really cool drag and drop film matte overlays. So as you can see it comes with six different ones in the pack. They're basically the same so it, it essentially comes with three and then uh, like in total it'll come with six, three for horizontal videos and then three for like square videos. So it's the same thing. One's designed for a square format like a ta uh, like a you know Instagram post and the other one is designed for like you know a horizontal or a YouTube video. So simply take the film matte effect, place it on top of your clip and then just trim it to your, your desired length. And now what you're going to do is you can take, just take the clip and let's just take the position of the clip. So we're going to move it over and then we're going to create a copy of that clip or you can add another clip. It's completely up to you whether or not you want the, the two to be exactly the same. Let's take the X axis and we're just going to drag it over. Let's select on this one and we're going to crop the right side. So let's just crop the right side. So you're just simply basically um, like you're placing the film mat on top of the clip and you're just adjusting the scale position 
and crop to make sure it fits inside the film mats and there you go simple as that it's a really cool drag and drop film overlay there's a total of six of them three or four square videos and three or four horizontal videos now what you may also want to do is you may want to add some noise to the actual clip so let's head over to the effects panel and we're just going to type in noise so you can see this is just a this is a, a free effect that'll come with final cut so just select on the clip and i would encourage you to take the type and turn it to a gaussian noise and then increase the amount and then you can just you know copy the effect over to the next clip but there you go i would just to kind of make it look a little more vintage as you can see now it has some noise so this is the before and this is after so i'd encourage you to add some noise just make it look a little bit nicer and make it give that more of that vintage feel now if you bought the film mat pack you may realize it comes with this really cool crystallize effect and you may think to yourself why would it, why would i need this really cool crystallize effect well basically what that allows you to do is it allows you to create a film mat or your own film mat from scratch because there is no rough and edges in final cut this is the closest thing so what you would do is you would just take the generator place it on top of your um clip and all you're going to do is just going to add a shape mask and adjust the settings the curvature the feather the radius how big you want or how small you want it you just basically go into adjust the setting settings of the shape mask then what you're going to do is going to add the crystallize effect onto the custom generator adjust the settings as well as i would encourage you to add a gaussian blur onto the actual like custom generator and then adjust the settings and there you go now what you may also want to do too if you don't want the like the the crystallize effect to be animating it's just export it like you you would like a still image now I have a whole video breaking down how to export you know photos in final cut with a png background but that's what you want to do is after you create it just create just export it as a still image make sure the background is transparent place it on top of your clip and you're able to create your own film mat trans a uh, film mat overlay so i wanted to you know, include some film mat overlays as well as give you an effect or the, give you the ability to create your own from scratch if you don't like the ones that i provided you now the next effect i want to go over is this really cool pro mist filter now this is just a drag and drop effect so make sure you put it in your like your effects folder so we're going to type in pro mist and as you can see here is this really cool pro mist filter so you can see if I place it onto that top of the clip, it's basically going to kind of like diffuse the highlights. So you can see this is what it looks like. You see it's kind of like diffusing the highlights. So a couple of settings I would encourage you to mess with is you can mess with the threshold to give it more of that hazy look. You can take, you know, the mix. You can take the amount and turn it all the way up. So as you can see, it's just going to add a little bit of like a nice uh, haze to your clip. And it'll just give you that Promise filter um, look. Obviously, buying a Promise filter is much better than getting a drag and drop effect. But if you don't want to spend, I don't know what it costs, but it probably costs hundreds of dollars to buy a Promise filter. Instead of buying a filter, you can just simply add a drag and drop effect on top of your clip and you will get a very similar look. Now, the last effect I want to go over is this really cool glowing outline effect. Now, I'm going to use it in terms of like a freeze frame transition. But you can obviously apply this effect to literally anything. So in this case, I'm going to use it as a freeze frame transition. So I'm going to freeze the first frame of the second clip. So click on option F to just simply create a freeze frame. Now I'm going to take this and I set it to control D 10 frames. So I'm just going to set the duration of this freeze frame to 10 frames, just like I did in the previous example. So let's go ahead and play the video. As you can see, it's just a frozen frame. So what you want to do is you want to select on the freeze frame and do the exact same thing. We're basically just going to add a draw mask. So you can see we're just going to take a draw mask and then place it onto the clip and you're just simply going to cut out the subject. So once you have the subject cut out, so I play the video, as you can see, the subject is just cut out. What you wanna do is you wanna select on the cutout layer and just hold down option and create a copy. Now this clip, the bottom one, you wanna apply the glow outline. So simply apply the glow outline to the bottom one, not on the top one. If you don't if you don't create a copy, this is what it's gonna look like. So you wanna make sure you create a copy and you apply the glowing effect to the bottom one. Now this is a preset, this is not a plugin. So what you do is you now you can basically adjust the settings, you can adjust the blur, or you can head over here to color and you can kind of like adjust the color so it gives you a lot of like customization so you gotta really customize it to get the look that you want. Now what I would encourage you to do is select both of them, create a compound clip, and we'll just call this glowing um, outline. So there we go, just simply create a compound clip so that way it's all you know together in one clip so you don't have to worry about you know keyframing each individual clip. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the beginning of it and let's zoom all the way out. We're just gonna create a very basic slide sliding freeze frame transition. You can of course do whatever you want, but in this case, we'll just do a simple sliding freeze frame transition. So let's take the clip and drag it off the screen, place a key, 
keyframe and then we're just going to go to the end of the clip and we're going to reset the position to zero so we'll just slide into zero go from you know the position is at negative 1600 to zero and a span of 10 frames and there you go you have a really clean sliding freeze frame transition with a really cool glowing outline so that's just one example of course you could you don't have to use this as in terms of like a freeze frame transition you could apply it to anything just make sure you take the the clip of the photo the cutout whatever you have create a copy and apply the glowing outline to the bottom clip now of course anytime you do any kind of freeze frame transition you want to make sure you apply some motion blur on top of the animation just to help smooth it out and make it look a lot nicer so just add some blur to the animation look make it look a lot smoother and a lot more you know nicer and realistic so let's play the video and as you can see there you go there's a really cool sliding freeze frame transition with a really cool glowing outline anyways hopefully you enjoyed this video if you enjoy these types of videos definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button also don't forget to check out my digital store where i sell final cut pro 10 presets plugins and overlays anyways i will see you in the next one peace